Good morning, it's Thursday, January 12th, 2023. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Pretender, and our scripture is Paul's letter to the Galatian church, chapter 1. I am shocked that you are turning away so soon from God who called you to himself through the loving mercy of Christ. You are following a different way that pretends to be the good news, but is not the good news at all. You are being fooled by those who deliberately twist the truth concerning Christ. That ancient descriptive about a wolf in sheep's clothing is all about pretense, pretending to be something else in order to gain another's favorable view. The sharpened teeth of that gain is when the wolf eats the sheep that's given trust. When Jesus sent his disciples out to spread the good news of salvation, he commissioned them with a cautionary bit of advice in Matthew chapter 10. Look, I'm sending you out as sheep among wolves, so be as shrewd as snakes and harmless as doves. Wolves that pretend to be sheep is a caricature of those who would eat you alive if they can gain your trust. And the chief tool used by spiritual wolves is the same as any other the lie. Apostle Paul was shocked at how the Galatian church had been turned by lies so quickly. Human nature is fickle, and this is why studying and meditating on God's word, which is entirely unadulterated truth, is so important. Internalizing the word of truth is a guard against the twisted claims of pretenders. Consider these two bedrock necessities for the believer. Proverbs chapter 12. Truthful words stand the test of time, but lies are soon exposed. And then Psalm 119, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. The crux of the issue in the case of the Galatian churches was truth, twisted to suit bending these new believers away from the freedom and strength of the gospel in order to enslave them to follow these spurious teachers who would take them even further from Jesus' way. Our day has plenty of parallels to all of this. There are prosperity lies which attempt to make the gospel a pyramid scheme, an easy entry into gaining wealth or power if you subscribe to the cult's twisted version of God's word. There are healing lies focusing on physical well-being of the body as something that can be extorted from God's power by twisting scripture out of its context, making the focus all about our human bodies, which by definition are flesh that's passing away. <laughs> Wouldn't it be terrible to live in these aging, sagging, weakening human skeletons forever? And then there are sexual lies. These days they have no end. In my youth in the 1950s and 60s, the so-called sexual revolution liberated, quote-unquote, fornication, which is sexual activity between unmarried couples. It became accepted, even lauded. In the 1980s, same sexuality relationships started to become normalized. A never-ending barrage of media and social campaigns culminated during the Obama era of legalizing same-sex marriage, flaunting man's disdain for God's commands. These are all spiritual lies which have the result of destroying long-standing faithfulness to godliness and have even turned sanctuaries consecrated to worshiping God into houses of human idolatry, sanctifying same-sex marriages. The United Methodist Church, descendant of Wesley's strong foundation in the scriptural word of truth, is undergoing a complete devolution in this lie. In our day, the lie has gained a reputation for truth. It's sad. For you today, be a dove kind of sheep, but be different than the Galatian brand. Be as shrewd as snakes. Beware the pretending wolves in sheep's clothing. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road. Have a blessed day.